no worries at all so uh, i think we can start uh, uh, with like we can uh, start some questions for now and uh, like like uh, dev devrithyo has provided a brief overview of this uh, briefing book and when he talks about territorial forests and protected areas so what i'd like to know is in your own uh, ground level experience how does the territorial forest compare with protected areas in terms of wildlife richness is it more or less and uh, and a follow up question to that would be why is the management of both these landscapes considered differently so if you could just highlight on that yeah uh, thank you actually uh, it is very interesting to see that uh, uh, most of the reports uh, about wildlife density and wildlife population when it comes into existence is talks about territorial forest and i hope on 29th another report is expected to come which will also suggest the same thing that half of the population of uh, major what you call uh, species used to stay in territorial area especially when you talk about uh, tiger which is flagship species and being seen as the main species as far as conservation is concerned and most of the attention are being being uh, you know put on that particular species which actually suggests that uh, territorial forest is very very important uh, for these species and uh, most of the time i say that more than 40% tigers used to stay in territorial forest so now you can understand the importance of territorial forest any protected forest cannot exist until else you have very what do you call uh, uh, very uh, successful conservation strategies for territorial forest because most of the time these territorial forest act as a buffer area for those protected areas for example i tell you just uh, uh, f- uh, four or five years ago i remember in kanha national park that how a tiger came out and young tiger came out and got settled in a resort and there was a lot of hue and cry and tourists were uh, you know peeping through windows and looking at that tiger and finally that tiger was caught and again sent back to the core area of kanha national park and in couple of days that tiger was killed by territorial tiger so interestingly i what i i could find uh, in the field that uh, when tiger population grows uh, it goes uh, it spreads uh, around the forest and most of the forest are territorial forest so therefore when you look at the protection measure uh, that become equally important as you protect in a protected area in a national parking sanctuaries uh, india is a very unique place where we we have conservation a specific conservation strategies strategies for a specific species we have tiger areas we have elephant areas we have rhino areas as you know and why this particular area because we protect that area in the name of that particular species for example if you see kanha national park where which which is initially was being protected for barasinga that brandery species of barasinga that is sarvas dovaseli brandery uh, that was the only what you call site in the world for brandery species of barasinga and grassland management was being done for that particular species but tiger encroached so much that tiger taken take, taken up everything from barasinga and tiger become very prominent in kana and then nobody knew about that brand barandery species of barasinga and recently second home for barandery species of barasinga in the world has been created that is satpura tiger reserve so we need to understand that until unless you have buffer area in the form of territorial what you call as territorial forest maintaining healthy population of any animal would be very very difficult because these territorial forests not only allow uh, uh, multiple use area for the neighborhood communities but also provide what you call safe passage corridors to the other animal to move from one protected protected area to another protected area for example uh, bench tiger uh, in madhya pradesh or maharashtra cannot survive until unless that corridor from bench to kana is maintained and what is that corridor that corridors are nothing but agriculture field and territorial forest so now i am just trying to show that what is the importance of a territorial forest for example when kuno wildlife sanctuary was uh, created in 1981 nobody knew that oh, soon it will become very famous when it was proposed for uh, second home for asiatic lion 
and the moment it was declared as a second proposed home for asiatic lion the buffer area means many territorial forest in adjoining area was uh, taken over and first time uh, a wildlife division has been created that is also very important to understand that so far we talk about many things protected areas and uh, national park sanctuary and territorial forest but first time i have seen that a wildlife division has been created which includes nothing but 344 square kilometer of wildlife sanctuary and further 900 square kilometer of territorial forest so territorial forest is very very important but when you look at the uh, what do you call management strategies is very very difficult and very very different from both uh, national park and sanctuaries and territorial forest most of the time territorial forest as being seen as a forest for everybody as a place which do not require any protection as as being seen the, uh, the biggest problem which i could see in the field that most of the time the staff what you call given uh, what you call uh, uh, the staff who, who are placed in those areas they never give that much of importance to that area because they have been groomed and trained in a way that territorial forest are being seen as a forest which need not to give so much of attention as being given in protected area so that is the level uh, of neglect uh, in territorial forest uh, the other important part which i would like to add that in any authority what devadutta was talking about it is easy to create authority but how we support so far i see that uh, when uh, uh, requirement of uh, forest guard you see because forest guards are most important component of any forest protection measures in country because other than forest guard nobody is there in the field i give you an example uh, to you just i will take few second that when then chief minister Uh, there was a chief minister in madhya pradesh uh, digvijay singh he had habit of taking helicopter and going to any village remote village so once he came around kuno wildlife sanctuary and uh, just uh, in, drop in a village uh, nobody was there no officer was there the only one officer came in uniform was a forest guard so forest guard is very important but the kind of training they have uh, it's very futile exercise in the way if you feel see management as, as far as management is concerned in territorial forest most of the forest guard are being placed uh, either they stay in headquarter which is neighboring tehsil or district they never stay in the field because so far i have seen or even though they are staying they stay in their headquarter never never go out in the field because the reason is as i told you they have been told they have been groomed they have seen the way protection are being done in territorial forest uh, one major portion which i see in protected area management and territorial forest management is the lack of staff if you look at the number of forest guard everywhere across the country devadutta was talking about mirzapur and i have seen in central india that in central india if you see uh, you find one forest guard for 10 square kilometer of forest do could you think that a forest guard can see 10 square kilometer impossible because when uh, when you look at the law the fear of law for the people for the poachers or for the criminals that fear comes from protected area only in territorial forest there is no fear at all but protected area is such a such a place which brings many herbivore and carnivore and most of the poaching being done in territorial forest mind it territorial forest give you entry and exit for all the poachers and all the illegal uh, person to going inside and coming out so uh, two things which are very important i find that number of staff and resource available for territorial forest are very very different the amount of money which ntca gives or earlier project tiger was giving for protected area management for national park and sanctuaries the same amount of money is not giving being given for territorial forest there are few areas like madhya pradesh i see i remember one very good officer were there and he managed some amount same amount to be given to the territorial forest for the management of trail for the management of water hole for management of the pasture land and etc but 
most of the time uh, territorial forests are in the state of neglect so in my opinion any authority can can be of little use until unless a resource flows takes place until unless a staff rich staff should be given to the territorial forest and that can only be possible when we'll give equal importance to territorial forest and uh, most of the time i see that territorial forest are being seen in general that it is made for the neighborhood community who can go easily take their fuel wood they allow to graze but grazing in a, inside a protected area or grazing in territorial forest are entirely different when you go in the territorial forest you won't find single blade of ground vegetation no grass even regenerations are very very poor the reason is there is nothing left if tendu season is there people put fire to grow new tendu leaf so what i am trying to say that legal protection is there for territorial forest if an animal dies the same wildlife protection act operates if you cut tree the same forest conservation act applies if you break the boundary same forest conservation act applies but theoretically it applies but in practical it is not being seen on the ground so i don't know how much this authority will act but this authority can what uh, we propose this authority can only be effectively utilized when uh, government can see it uh, as a important in integral part uh, one more thing i would like to use this uh, last year i i spent a lot of time in panna tiger reserve going around the territorial forest and i found that territorial forest are also surrounded by agriculture field so do this authority has some sort of vision to see that these uh, agriculture field are also become bigger land part of landscape which encompasses territorial forest and agriculture field because most of the time when animal moves uh, as a corridor they largely utilize territorial forest and agriculture field for example paddy crops are there you have bajra and jowar they are tall those are the time when a tiger moves in a corridor they get uh, their shelter in those areas for example in dudwa tiger reserve you see the sugar cane field become important but got refused for tigers while moving so therefore while looking at authority can we see those agriculture field also as a bigger landscape because these uh, until unless we include this agriculture field uh, uh, in this bigger landscape probably our exercise would be futile and we have also seen that how it could be utilized when i was in panna i was discussing with very senior wildlife biologist dr rangrandan singh chundavat and we found that uh, uh, when you talk in terms of tourism territorial forest never invites tourist no tourist can go to territorial forest can we see that community can manage portion of territorial forest along the agriculture field which can be seen as a very good destination and where community can um, make all conservation measures and therefore grazing can be easily stopped by community when they will earn money the grazing will be stopped and regeneration will start and therefore what you call quality of territorial forest will enhance so these are some of the questions i i have some of the ideas i'd like to add all right uh thank you dr kut sir like those are very interesting suggestions uh especially given the fact that an authority uh, even if it's on like on in law how does it affect in the in practice is the real question with any authority uh devuth do you have any thoughts on what uh, mr kut uh, dr kut sir just mentioned yeah so uh, it's very useful what he mentioned especially the last part whether he says like whether it can promote tourism in tetral forest so uh, there is other one more challenge so it is also interlinked with each other so one is obviously like agriculture fields are also important uh, and tourism it has potential but in my experience what i have seen is in this territorial forest though there are wildlife but they are but they have adapted themselves to be nocturnal because there is so much disturbances there okay say so night only you can see animals and these animals may not be lucrative so maybe i want to see tiger but uh, if it is too much disturbed and there are poaching also happening there the animal will become elusive okay so all the animals they are known to be elusive if there is too much disturbance or it's not a good uh, like you know culturally human beings are not friendly with animals and there are also examples where animals animals become friendly with human because the community has treated the wildlife very nicely that we have observed 
so yeah tourism in tetral falls will depend on the local community and uh, also like how much how much i will we are able to uh, you know limit those disturbances uh, and secondly like there are tourism in some forest like because not because of the wildlife but because of the like waterfall is there or some temple is there because all this forest they also have some historical monuments historical uh, you know temples are there so people do visit this forest but otherwise uh, so i have uh, so i don't know if any is like good example whether tetral forest uh, has impact tourism it is a very good point so uh, this i will definitely note uh, how to promote tourism in tetral forest and obviously uh, like, i I, I, i would like to add something on it yeah, yes if you actually uh, how it will be done as you talk about tourism tourism only can seen in terms of tiger but don't forget that look at the people from united states uk they largely come here for bird watching in my experience i have seen they are ready to pay any amount so just think about it if you create very good ground vegetation by allowing what do you call neighborhood community to look after 1 5 10 km square kilometer of forest along with forest guard so forest guard will get strengthened from the community and then they will earn money for example so far whatever tourism is being done they are not benefiting local community i give you one example i once long back in 1997 i had written one editorial in pioneer and i had said that uh, most of the time community feels that these national park and pro protected areas are playground for rich what do you call foreigners and they feel left behind the dust of safari jeep and this is the truth today the uh, most of com most of the community working in their lodges lodges are uh, from delhi and mumbai not from the community and most of the community people are working there as a labor they are not but participating directly in the earning for example you look at serengeti national park tanzania how they are there there is a community fund into it which is not here today so far there is no money uh, earmark for the community itself so this territorial uh, forest will give this opportunity to the people that if you are looking after 5 square kilometer then you won't allow any grazing into it illicit felling of trees into it and you manage water hole etc i'm sure people who loves birds people who loves invertebrates people who loves lesser mammals they will come and enjoy and that's why i added agriculture field agriculture fields are so important for example you see what do you call that nepal famous national park uh, chitwan chitwan see chitwan along the chitwan there are a lot of agriculture field and many people are growing their crop just to invite rhinos in their field and they are made arrangements so that people can stand on a platform and can watch rhinos and click photograph so things can be done until unless the, the moment community will feel that they, this forest belong to them this tiger is for them today tiger is government tiger this forest is government forest that is the situation so far so the moment you associate community with this forest i i am sure my experience with the community which i worked with gond baiga saharias and i learned certainly they will perform very good for example dharmender working in rantapur on parthis the same parthis are now very important what you call person who, who are what you call monitoring the entire area for example if you see kerala tiger is a periyar periyar utilize all those poachers previous poachers uh, in in their patrolling they were pointed so these things we need to understand that these forest uh, this authority can accommodate entire landscape as a whole then only then probably including village agriculture field so that we can get better result okay thank you dr khud sir uh that was also another uh, great uh, insight from you uh now since you're talking about community engagement and community uh, involvement right. in a post covid scenario what is the way forward to manage territorial forest given the wildlife human interaction which is much prevalent in such tfs and as and as we know that this has come from a, like covid has come as a zoonotic disease 
So I'll, in light of that, what are your thoughts? I, I'll suggest you very interestingly when, when you look at ecology, what it says in terms of COVID. You know, it is very clear that when you have eco very complex ecosystem, which talks about three to four story forest uh, and its interaction with the animals, microbes, insect, everything, what you call as a complex ecosystem. When your ecosystem is complex, most of the pathogen tend to dilute. What do you mean by it? I'm trying to convey that these pathogen get diluted within the system through animals. And the moment your system is simplified, these pathogen jumped over, jumped out and then find alternate host and human will get affected. These territorial forests are interface between the complex ecosystem and simplified ecosystem. Now you see. And the interacting element are not only wildlife, but your domesticated cattle, which goes to territorial forest. They are the one who brings these animals. So far in 60 years, I remember more than 440 or something diseases, uh, you know, spill over from the uh, wild animal and domesticated animal to human beings. And what you call as uh, zoonotics. And right from HIV to Ebola and now this COVID-19, it is very clear. One of the paper published in Nature suggests that how it has come from first this uh, virus affected, infected, uh, what you call bat. And then that bat, from bat, it went to pangolin. And in pangolin, it changes a little bit. And then it went to human beings. And it happened only in Wuhan. Wuhan wet market where live animals are being sold for food purpose. So it is very clear that if you want to uh, stay fit, if you want to, what do you call, keep these pandemic away from you, it is very important to you manage a functional ecosystem. What do you mean by functional ecosystem? An ecosystem which minimum, what do you call, addresses three trophic structure. That should be, what do you call, producer, consumer, and decomposer. For example, I tell you, Delhi has huge forest. You might have seen the Delhi Ridge, what you call as the last spur of Arab Hill Ranges, which covers about 7,777 hectares of area. But when you go to Delhi Ridge, you won't find any ground litter. What, what, what does it mean? It means that decomposers are not active. Means your ecosystem is not functional. If the entire ecosystem is dominated by only one species, more than 70%, you find Prosopis juliflora or Vilaiti kicker. In Rajasthan, they say Gondo Babul. So that Gondo Babul is dominating the ridge. And therefore, this ridge has an empty forest. And I remember recently, UNEP uh, Director General Iyengar, Iyengar that, uh, Madam Iyengar suggested that empty forest is a very serious issue these days as far as COVID is concerned. And uh, empty forest actually uh, happens because so far we talk about deforestation, but there is a new term called, it's an old term, but not being utilized, defaunation. Defaunation in territorial forest is very, very high. How it happens? Most of the animals uh, live on two kinds of gills. One is habitat gills, another is foraging gills. So habitat are being destroyed because ground vegetation is nil and the food material for many species buying taken away by the human beings. For example, if most of a lot of birds are largely depend on fruits, frugivore birds, like gooseberries, amla, you have what do you call tendu fruits, and uh, what do you call you have uh, achar, buchanania langer. Achar, you must be knowing, it's a uh, it's a dry fruit available in the market. Uh, what is the name? I don't know commercial name. So buchanania langer. So what happens? The moment it ripes, it is being taken out by the community. So the birds who depends on that foraging gill, either they shift or they not breed. In COVID, what happened? We are very happy to see that we see many birds, may, uh, many nests. Most of the birds has increased their flight range. What do you mean by it? They had gone in their former historical geographical ranges. It suggests that when no vehicle was flying, aeroplane was on the ground, no people was going out. So animal, most in most of the ecosystem we encroached and 
we made that ecosystem simplify and territorial forest forest falls in the same category so when uh, there is no disturbance in surrounding areas suddenly these animals found a space and they came out for example you see that malabar civet when it was seen in kojikode main road people were very happy in kordwar elephant are moving in chandigarh leopards are become very frequent so it shows that uh, uh, two legged animal are the most deadliest creature on the earth and therefore if you look uh, in terms of territorial forest and covid if territorial forests are more strong if it becomes uh, you know functional ecosystem then incidences of kobe decreases i give you one best example one of my friend is a forest officer is trying to understand he has sent one map to me very recently that in madhya pradesh wherever the per capita tree availability was more than 200 trees the covid incident are negligible or very little it's a very good good example to suggest that how territorial forest enrichment and restoration of territorial forest or protection of territorial forest can help combating this sort of pandemic all right thank you thank you again dr pur sir that was also very insightful as to the requirement i mean how territorial forest regeneration is the answer is the probable answer to this uh, pandemic yeah. uh, and uh, i'd like to ask and uh, end it with one final question about uh, existing bodies because we are talking about creating a new authority uh, and so there are existing bodies with some some level of power such as the ntca the state biodiversity board and the state board for wildlife what do you think of the idea of merging their powers within such an authority so that it becomes a more holistic uh, the reason i say this is because the board of uh, like sbwl they do deal with the protected areas while biodiversity boards are more areas outside of the protected areas so when you merge them into some authority like this will that uh, have any positive impact or what are your thoughts you see i have been actively participating in uh, state biodiversity boards of madhya pradesh and i have seen uttar pradesh i have no fear to suggest that most of the biodiversity boards are dead uh, i remember uh, one of the very active board when i was doing my masters was karnataka biodiversity board uh, who has first time prepared uh, the biodiversity register for the entire area but unfortunately over a period of time these boards are defunct and those boards uh, are not active because either they have no staff no money no mandate and uh, in madhya pradesh i see that board is very very active very active since beginning when bms rathor was there now murthy sahab is there they are very actively they are working madhya pradesh somehow i find boards are actively participating you also added uh, that state Good board of wildlife Uh, you see, uh, it is a laughing stock. A state, whether it's a state wildlife board or national wildlife board, and Devadito is also smiling. These boards are created to clear projects. They are not to protect forest. They are there to kill forest. For example, I tell you, Devadito brought uh, one very good example that is national aquatic animal, that is dolphin, Gangetic dolphin. I remember seeing dolphin. uh in chambal and working in chambal for longer period of time because kuno was one of my very important destination in my life and i served chambal two three times entire chambal from shopur to itawa i tell you in chambal sand mining is rampant in every it is in everybody's eyes whosoever comes as a government <laughs> they become party to it whosoever political party they become party to it but there is a law in place there is a mining what you call department in place there is a state wildlife board there is a district authority and nothing happens nothing happens so some of the forest officer says and lot of my friends in forest officer that do you think that ntca has done anything good for tiger it's very interesting even look at the a project tiger when it was started in 1972 with nine protected area initially there is a man, there was a mandate that every protected area should keep one researcher or scientist it was never placed there except kana or some of the park there was never a scientist 
so the scientific management of any protected area is required even ntca has not included this who will collect basic data but unfortunately when ntca came wildlife institute got associated with the ntca and they are doing you know a ritual every year and on 29th probably that data sheet will come so what i suggest that i have little hope from the uh, state biodiversity board and uh, uh, state what you call wildlife board they are uh, state uh, wildlife board has no role but biodiversity board can do something because uh, correctly you have su suggested that uh, they are the one who are working with the community but unfortunately most of the uh, states has not even created village level community uh, what you call uh, forest community group so far it has not been done which is mandated in the state biodiversity board but it was not achieved so bringing this organization within this uh, within the ambit of this author this authority i don't know how much fruitful it would be but yes i will say a state uh virus the board might be of some use in my opinion it might be of some use because uh, uh if people are convinced they can perform something but a state board and national wildlife board i have little hope okay uh, it's an interesting segue i think uh, because of our time uh, we've gone on a bit so i might just uh, take in uh, this one audience question so uh, it's basically about the national board which uh, you just answered as to whether how often does the national board meet and if its role is advisory how can it be made more effective and does the standing committee have a role in policy making or only project clearance you see the present board is very funny devadutta will also add to it funny in, in uh, it is being uh, chaired by honorable prime minister of the country so now you can look at the importance of this board and uh, so far there was no meeting but during covid lockdown there was an online meeting to clear many projects you see the mandate of national wildlife board is very clear you look at the projects which are really important i remember filing a case before central import committee regarding one of the very important road in jammu and kashmir very important road and when uh, official convinced central part committee now this is important and that road was cleared but it took lot of time lot of paper discussion everything gone it is not that we came you came and we have cleared that project so national wildlife board has very good mandate if good people are there but the per, in present scenario the team is very different and it all depends on individual in the team those members are very important but until unless those members are have this background of wildlife they have interest for it and they are ready to shout at government because when government is sitting in front of you they will put all pressure on you but you are ready to bear that pressure only then you can address the issue but at present the board is only for clearing project many a story has come in recent past i have seen in print and many other that is clear that board is ineffective at present though the the way it was created if you remember uh a former prime minister she has taken initiative and how we have created second home for rhino in dudwa how this project tiger came how the project elephant was created how environmental protection act was enacted so that importance need to be given thinking in terms of covid 19 or pandemic until this government convinced that these forests are important to protect human beings these forests are important to give water to human beings and these forests are important to provide you know good air quality to human beings it is difficult and who will convince the members are there to convince those members should be expert enough to convince and those members have got got to shout only then it is possible but in present scenario everybody knows shouting has no meaning you are shout you shouting you are eliminated <laughs> devadutta you please add uh, i can only add that i, I just agree with you and in the recent examples like first time we are seeing like denotification of sanctuaries so there was one tadlo sanctuary which was denotified recommended by the state board wildlife there is one more sanctuary in western ghat which is getting denotified 
So now the state of wildlife are going beyond uh, giving permission. They are only notifying sanctuaries. So it tells you like uh, how the bandit has shifted. <laughs> like so, yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, last thing I would like to add. I will take thirty second. Most of the time when I speak, people say that you are against development. I give you two quick two example that since last three days, due to rain, Tilak Bridge and Mintu Bridge was flooded. Bus was floating. Have you seen that picture? Why? Who has stopped that construction of bridge? Nobody has stopped. It's a historical bridge. But what we are against for is while constructing that bridge, who has asked those contractor and planner to not to look at the natural drainage pattern of water? That is the problem. As an expert, we have all what do you call right to convey to the government that when you are doing any what do you call development work, please look at these smaller aspects. Otherwise, you would be suffering. Environment would be suffering. So please don't blame. I, what I'm trying to say, don't blame. Please see, planner and architect are master of destruction in this country. Short term, we work with short term vision. I'm sorry if some art architect is listening to me, but this is the truth. River is dying. The city is dying because of faulty planning and short term vision. Short term vision means less than 50 years. Yes, please. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Khudsa, for all your comments, and uh, Devuthi, you as well. Uh, I think what we, uh, as we as the audience, have gotten from this is that this idea of an authority can work if we can implement it in in practice rather than it just being on paper. Right. Funding, funding, and the manpower Stop. is most important for uh, an authority like this. Yes. And uh, the fact that there is no money uh, or resor financial resources right now allotted to ter territorial forests, unless yes. that aspect changes, there is no hope for territorial forests. There yes. was another interesting point about how territorial forests need to be enriched to avoid pandemic-like situations, to make it uh, a natural, well-working ecosystem. Uh, and he, uh, Dr. Kutsar, also spoke about the role of. Uh, Agencies like the board of uh, biodiversity board and the national board of wildlife. I mean, they, these are they can contribute in their own ways if they work in the right sense and yes. and not the way we see now. So uh, with that, uh, I should I would like to thank everybody who's been listening in. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in and also for your uh, questions. Uh, please feel free to write to us if you have any more queries uh, and. Uh, uh, Debitio's email uh, I'll be just providing. Uh, please note that the uh, six conversa conversation series is on 24th of July, uh, which is this Friday. Do tune in if you are interested in the conversation about measures to reduce overcapacity in certain sectors in the market. It, uh, the conversation will be presided over by Dr. Magali Eben, Professor of Competition Law, Glasgow University and co-director of the Academic Society for Competition Law, UK chapter. Uh, with this, uh, I'd like to end this uh, conversation and I really thank uh, Dr. Fayez Khudsar and Devuthi Sina for sparing your uh, time from your busy schedule and also to all the audience. Thank you and uh, thank good you, evening sir. to everybody. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Thank you, Shama. Thank you, thank you so